Hello and welcome to yet another South Korean college scholastic ability test video. This is the problem from the most recent test that the students who want to go to college in 2024 attend. I have already uploaded a video about the most difficult problem of this year's test, which you can check in the description. Today, let us take a look at what I think is the second most difficult problem, or should I say, the second most irritating problem of the test. For natural numbers a and b, function fx is given as 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1 when x is less than or equal to 2, and a times x minus 2 times x minus b plus 9 when x is greater than 2. For a real number t, let gt be the number of points where the graph of y equals fx meets the straight line y equals t. If only one real number k satisfies, gk plus limit of gt where t approaches k from the left plus limit of gt where t now approaches k from the right equals 9, what is the maximum value of a plus b? Alright, that is one heck of a lengthy problem. To make things feel less overwhelming, let us divide the problem into three parts. The first part is where the information about function fx is given. The second part is how the function gt is defined. And of course, the last part is about this condition containing one-sided limits. Let's start from the first part. The very first thing we can do is try to draw the graph of fx to see how the graph looks like. Let us draw this part of the graph first. It is a cubic function, so we take derivative. The derivative is 6x squared minus 6, which is 6x plus 1, x minus 1. So f prime x is 0 when x is minus 1 and 1. So in here, the derivative is 0 at x equals minus 1, 0 at x equals 1, and positive on this side, negative in the middle, and positive on this side. So the graph increases, decreases, then increases again. And the local maximum value f minus 1 is 5, and the local minimum value f1 is minus 3, and at the end point x equals 2, we have f2 equals 5. So in the end, we have this graph. Nothing too crazy going on over here, just a regular looking cubic function, right? Now let's move on to more interesting part of the graph. The part where x is greater than 2 with natural numbers a and b. This is a quadratic function with positive leading coefficient a, so we know that the graph is a convex parabola. The next thing we can do is to find some easily identifiable points that this parabola passes through. For example, consider x coordinate of 2. Then you can easily notice from the equation that the y coordinate must be 9. And we can also easily find that when x coordinate is b, the y coordinate also becomes 9. So this is the parabola that passes the points 2, 9 and b, 9. Now this b can have value that is less than 2, exactly 2, and greater than 2. Therefore, depending on the values of b, we obtain these two different figures for the entire graph of fx. When b is less than or equal to 2, then b, 9 is on the left side of 2, 9, so we only have the increasing part of the parabola. When b is greater than 2, then b, 9 is on the right side of 2, 9, so we have both decreasing and increasing parts of parabola. So the effect of b on the graph is clear. When b changes, the axis of symmetry and the vertex of the parabola both changes, meaning that the minimum value at the parabolic part will change accordingly. However, as long as a remains constant, these infinitely many parabolas are all congruent. Now what about the case where a changes while b remains constant? Well, in that case, the point b, 9 stays at a fixed position just like point 2, 9. But since the leading coefficient of the quadratic function changes, the curvature of the parabola, that is, how much the parabola is closed or how sharp the parabola is, does change. So now that we know how the graph of fx looks like, 
Let's move on to the next part of the problem. This part gives information on another function, gt. It says, for a real number t, function gt is defined as the number of points where the graph of y equals fx meets the straight line y equals t. For example, consider the graph of y equals fx with these specific values of a and b. And we want to find the value of gt at t equals 4. In order to do that, we consider a straight line y equals 4, which is of course parallel to the x-axis. And then we count the number of intersection points between the red curve and the blue line. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 intersection points in total, which means that g4 equals 5. And it is obvious that as the value of t changes, the number of intersection points also change, and the number of such points depends on how the graph of fx looks like. So obviously, we need to consider each case. So let us start with the very first case, where b is less than or equal to 2, and thus the parabola only contains increasing part. We will change the value of t, that is, moving this straight line up and down, and construct a gt versus t plot by counting the number of intersection points. First, the case where t is very low. t is less than minus 3 to be exact. In this case, there is only one intersection, so gt equals 1. So we have this graph. When t is less than minus 3, gt equals 1. Next, t becomes exactly minus 3, the local minimum value of the cubic function. Then, as you can see, the number of intersection points becomes 2, so gt equals 2. So the graph jumps to 2. Next, we have this middle section between local minimum and local maximum. This is the case where t is greater than minus 3 and less than 5. Here we have three intersections, so gt equals 3. So between minus 3 and 5, the value of gt is 3. Next, t becomes exactly 5, the local maximum value. Then the number of points drops to 2, so gt becomes 2 again. Next, what about this middle section? More specifically, when t is greater than 5 and less than or equal to 9. In this region, the red curve cannot meet the blue line, so gt equals 0. So the graph of gt is 0 in this region. Finally, t becomes greater than 9, and the line meets the parabola at a single point, so gt becomes 1 again. So this is the graph of gt as t changes. We can obtain different graphs of gt using different graphs of fx for different cases, but before we do that, let us actually take a look at the last condition of the problem. And although the left-hand side looks quite complicated, with all these one-sided limits and all, the value of this expression only depends on the value of k. In other words, the left-hand side is a function of k, so let us call it a new function, hk. Now let us think about what is the meaning of this hk. I will just use the previous case of fx and the corresponding graph of gt. If you look at this hk, it is the sum of three values. The actual value of a function gt at t equals k, then the limit of gt as t approaches k from the left, and the limit of gt as t approaches k from the right. For example, what is the value of h minus 3 in this setting? First, the exact value of the function is 2, and the limit approaching from the left is 1, and the limit approaching from the right is 3. So we have 2 plus 1 plus 3, which is 6. For another one, what is the value of h4? The exact value of the function is 3, and since now k is in the region where gt is continuous, the limit approaching from the left and from the right are both 3. So we have 3 plus 3, 
which gives 9, which is the value mentioned in the problem. However, it says only one real number k satisfies the condition hk equals 9. But in this case, you can see that all values of k in between this minus 3 and 5 gives hk equals 9. So there are not just one, but infinitely many values of k that give hk equals 9, which contradicts the given condition. This means that this case is an invalid case. That leaves us the other case where b is greater than 2. However, in this case, as you have already seen, this vertex of the parabola, which occurs at x equals b plus 2 over 2, changes as a and b changes, so the minimum value of parabola, which I will call m, also changes. And depending on the position of this m on the y-axis, the graph of gt will drastically change. So how many cases are there? Well, five, right? There are five different cases, depending on the value of this m, that results in five different gt versus t graphs. So does that mean we need to do this entire thing again for every one of these five cases? Well, not really, because obtaining an entire graph of gt is not the main goal of the problem. We just have to find the specific part of this gt graph that violates this given condition, that there has to be only one real number k that satisfies hk equals 9. If such parts exist in the graph of gt, then we can conclude that this is an invalid case. And one such case is this part right here, where y equals t intersects the graph of y equals fx at three different points, and that happens over a certain range of t values. In this case, we have three intersection points for all t values between minus 3 and 5, so gt has value of 3 in this entire interval. This means that if we pick any real number between minus 3 and 5 as k, that k will satisfy hk equals value of function 3, this limit 3, and this limit 3, so 9. So there are infinitely many k satisfying hk equals 9, which violated the condition. Hence, we know that this is an invalid case. And we don't even need an entire graph here. Just this specific one interval was enough. I mean, the entire graph of gt looks like this, and although it looks kinda cool, we don't really care. Just finding out this region was enough to invalidate this case. So for other remaining cases, we try to find an interval of t with non-zero length, where gt equals 3 in that interval. In this case, we have three intersection points in this middle section between minus 3 and 5, so gt equals 3 in this interval, meaning that for every k in this interval, hk equals 9, so we have infinite numbers of k, so it is invalid. In the next case, we still have three intersection points in this middle part, so we have gt being continuously 3 from minus 3 to m. So this is also invalid. For the next case, we still have three intersection points at t equals minus 3, but only at t equals minus 3. Therefore, we cannot determine yet whether this case violates the given condition for hk. But if we move on to the last case, we can clearly see that we can have three intersection points for a certain range of t. More precisely, when t is in between m and minus 3. Meaning that this is also an invalid case. Therefore, except this case, all other cases are invalid, so we take a closer look at this case. In this case where m is exactly minus 3, the graph of gt is as follows. First, when t is below minus 3, the number of intersection points is 1. Next, when t becomes exactly minus 3, we have 3 intersection points, so gt becomes 3. Next, 
between minus 3 and 5, we have 5 intersection points, so gt jumps to 5. The next case is when t becomes exactly 5, and you can notice that the number of intersection points is 4. Then t becomes greater than 5 but less than 9. In this region, gt has value of 2. Finally, after t becomes 9, gt drops back to 1. So this is the graph of gt. Now if we consider hk using this graph, notice that at this value of k, k equals minus 3, h minus 3 equals the value of function 3, the limit from the left 1, the limit from the right 5, so we have 9. In fact, you can easily notice that hk is 9 only if k equals minus 3. So this is the only valid case where only one real number k satisfies the given condition hk equals 9. So we have our valid case, and what was the problem again? Well, our function fx contains natural numbers a and b, and the problem wants us to find the maximum value of their sum a plus b. So we get back to the graph of fx. This only valid case is where the minimum value of the quadratic function part is exactly minus 3. And from the quadratic function, we know that the minimum value occurs at x equals b plus 2 over 2, so we have the condition f b plus 2 over 2 equals minus 3. And if we let x equals b plus 2 over 2 in here, you can actually see that the value of the function is a times b over 2 minus 1 squared with minus sign plus 9. And this equals minus 3. And this can be written as a times b over 2 minus 1 squared equals 12. And if we multiply 4 on both sides, we can write a times b minus 2 squared equals 48. And a and b are natural numbers. Here, we want to maximize the value of a plus b. Since b minus 2 is squared, we want b minus 2 to be as small as possible because that will allow a to have the greatest value possible, so we will have the greatest possible value of a plus b. For example, let's think about the opposite case where a has the smallest possible value, such as a equals 3. This means b minus 2 squared is 16, so b minus 2 can have value only as big as 4. However, if we let b minus 2 squared have the smallest value, which is 1, then a can have the value as big as 48. And this is indeed the case that maximizes a plus b. So a equals 48, and the biggest possible value for b is b equals 3. So we have maximum value of a plus b equals 48 plus 3, which is 51. And from our choices, the correct choice is 1. So that was all for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Please go check my other videos as well. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And as always, I will see you in another video.